In an earlier video, I described the use of InShot to put together videos. In this video, I'll be covering UCut Video Editor because InShot is not available to phones registered under the Micronesia region for Google Play on Android. UCut is produced by InShot and works much the same way. Here I'll start to assemble a video on a tire change and trip to town I did today. It's organized the same way as InShot and works just like InShot. So here's a video. I might want to put in a series of short videos. Uh, if I've got a sequence that I want to follow between videos and photos that I've made, I'll have to come over to here and I can intermix videos and photos in the order in which they might have happened. Uh, this is maybe a little sequence of driving in town, maybe uh, a photo in here, a scenic view here from South Park and then maybe wrapping up with a final video of some sort. If I then click on the arrow, it'll start to put them together and it will look a lot, if you, it sounds familiar to me, it's in, is being just like in shot. Um, I'm using the free version. Transitions are uh, fairly basic, uh, but uh, and it will usually, when you're working on a transition like this, it'll show you the transition above. And here I'm transitioning between a video clip and a photo. The video editor allows you to mix these two things together. In fact, I can use that transition. I'll use that fade B for all. So I'll check this one on the left, apply to all. And it will actually apply it to all of them. I can do uh, text if I want to. Click on text. Uh, there's my little text box. Put in what I want to. Move it to where I want it to appear. And I can say check. And just like uh, I'm used to from my own work in InShot, I can change the duration right here. When I've got the text the way I want it to look, I can then uh, take a look at how that will appear on my video. This one is overlapping. A, so it overlaps between a photo and a video section. If I long tap, I can change the order, drag and drop to allow me to change the order if I wish to of the different segments. And when I'm done, press check. Uh, some of the other things I can do is for these, um, for these still shots, we can usually change the time here, the speed, uh, which, well, this is a, maybe a video. Let's find a still, an actual still photo. That seems to be a so I can alter the speed. Well, they call it speed in this one, but how long it runs for, and I can drag and drop to fit those together and make those piece together nicely. And uh, I can do over here. I can do voiceover if I wish. This is my first time. To I can then and when I've got it in I can press check uh, whether or not I can actually move that voice over I'm not less certain but uh, I can play with the volume of the video so it's it's a essentially 
a lightweight version of uh, the InShot. InShot is, is a bit more capable. This is the free version I'm using. It will sometimes ask that I upgrade to premium. I just opt out. You don't need to upgrade to get a basic video editor that will let you put things together, stitch them together, do some voiceover if you want to, do some text over if you want to. So it's a bit more basic and maybe a bit easier to use. And the key thing is I'll be able to output the, the uh, video, my final video. I'll be able to go to save and switch it to 720p. This will greatly reduce the size, uh, reducing the size by a factor of two to three. And for reasons I don't always understand, it will um, increase the upload speed of the video greatly. I'll be able to up, it will upload much faster to YouTube as a result. So, although in, uh, some of my videos I speak of using InShot, and I do use InShot to edit videos. InShot may not be available to students who may need to put together a video presentation using video clips and uh, images. And so, the, but UCut uh, does uh, appear to be available to them in the Google Play Store for Android. I cannot speak to what's available for iOS, but either InShot or UCut or both will be available to students working in iOS. In addition, students working in iOS may have access to uh, iMovie or other tools. Uh, the, depending on the brand of their phone, they may have other options. But I'm using here phones that are equipped with a plain vanilla Google operating system, Android basic Android and Google tools and they do not come with a built-in video editor and so I have to download something like InShot or in this case UCut and uh, when I'm done I'll probably want to save it as a draft so I can come back and edit it again when I go to do this I can go pick up my last draft if I wish to so it's the only draft I've got I haven't actually saved any other drafts uh, so just a basic video editor that can put together videos and most critically for our students save it in a 720p format that will upload more quickly and more efficiently on their limited bandwidth they may still have upload difficulties but it will it, it will work better for them than trying to upload raw video straight from their phone it also gives them a chance to trim and edit their video to, to suit the needs of the particular assignment they're working on. As I've noted, the, the key skill in the last century was to be able to write an introduction, body, and conclusion for an essay. The key skill going forward is being able to function in Zoom-based environments with presentations, slides, and videos. And videos can have an introduction, body, and conclusion. And this is the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching.